and welcome to today's live IELTS class. This second live class today is continuing from the topic of our speaking part two class that just finished. We are on to speaking part three about social activities. Again, everybody, this lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there. Uh, for the general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. These are the websites that power these live classes. They have all of our videos, practice exams, interactive courses, and tons, tons more. And it's a great time to get our live or our uh, website premium package because we have the Black Friday sale going on right now for the next uh, 24 hours, maybe, maybe 48, 24 hours. So you can use the code BLKFDAY40 on the websites uh, and it's the right time to do it. <clears throat> it's a one-time payment for lifetime access all you have to do when you go to aehelp.com is click that big red button that's just above my head there. It's a one-time payment again, and you can use the code BLKFDAY40 <clears throat> to get that 40% discount, and you'll get all the materials you need to prepare you for the IELTS exam. Uh, we're an IDP affiliate. We are a British Council partner. We are an IELTS test registration center. I'm a British Council agent. We're here to help. General IELTS, gieltshelp.com. It's the green background. Again, click that big red button and you're good to go. The apps that link to the websites are Academic IELTS Help for the Academic and General IELTS Help for the General. Instagram is IELTS underscore AE Help and GIELTS Help. You will see videos uh, and uh, reels and uh, vocabulary schedules on Instagram. If you have any questions, just send them to me, adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. If you buy the course through Shopify, through YouTube, by clicking on the shopping, you can also use the Black Friday discount there. Just make sure to send me an email so I can activate your premium IELTS package. Um, everybody, so uh, speaking part three, we're going to use Zoom as well in this class uh, so that uh, you can uh, answer some questions in an actual um, candidate examiner type interview setting. Uh, Zoom to download, it's this link here. If you don't have it yet, it's a good piece of software, as many of you know. And this is the uh, Zoom link for this class. I'm going to also start the Zoom session right now and uh, I will let everybody in once we start the uh, speaking practice. So let me just start that up for everybody. There we go. So you should be able to uh, uh, join the class there as well. <clears throat> and um, just uh, stay in the waiting area for now. I can see lots of people joining in. Fantastic. And again, I'll let you into uh, the chat um, as soon as we start the practice. We have lots of videos for you on our channel. This is a new one that we released just in the last week. It's a reading one for the true, false, not given questions. Amiria is saying, I have my exam on the 15th of December. Any advice for preparation? Amira, I have lots of advice. One important advice for anybody who is sitting the exam in the next week or two. Make sure to do a full practice exam the same way as the real exam where you do the listening, reading, writing in three hours sitting and then after a couple hours do a practice speaking interview with a partner or a teacher so that you can get a feel for the real exam. It's quite intense when you do it because you have to do the exam for three hours for the uh, listening, reading, writing. So it's important that you practice that same situation. Okay, Amira? And we will practice the speaking right now. So this is a great place to be practicing uh, your speaking. Now this speaking class for speaking part three is speaking. So make sure to speak and repeat, copy what I say, 
copy how I say it. Let's just jump right in and I will give you strategies, tips, band nine sample answers as we move along. So uh, many of you were in the last class and as you remember, we were talking about a club that you had been a member of. Um, Ivan spoke about the chess club that he was a member of. Uh, Fuang, uh, she spoke about a volunteer club in high school. Anna spoke about um, the law reading uh, club or reading on law club. And then uh, we also had AC uh, talking about his uh, geography club. I think he explained that a bit differently, but uh, anyway, it was kind of like a geography club. So keep that in mind. Uh, always remember part two for part three. The examiner says that is the end of part two. Now we will continue with part three. For this part, I will ask you some questions related to your response in the topic of part two. So they're basically telling you that part two part three are connected. So make connections in your communication. So uh, for instance, you should be thinking and using phrases like, as I had mentioned uh, previously <clears throat> in my chess club, I met a lot of friends. Dot, dot, dot. Or um, like I said, in the previous part, I gained um, a lot of value from being a member of the book club. Okay. The examiners, when they're trained um, for high band scores like band seven, eight, or nine, uh, they have to listen for uh, conversation styles style interaction. What that means is for those high band scores, the examiners are checking to see if your communication sounds like a clear, connected conversation, professional conversation, not a colloquial conversation. So it's not like, yeah, sure, no, I did that for sure. The other day I was there. So no, it's not like that. It's professional. Okay. So high band, so band seven to nine, uh, scores <clears throat> need to sound like a professional conversation. Okay. That's what you're focusing on. Uh, Nock, if you cannot enter the uh, Zoom, I'm not sure why. There are already 11 people in there, so the link should work. You got. You have to check your Zoom permissions, etc. Um, and uh, those people in the waiting room, just hang out, stay there in Zoom. I will let you in shortly. Okay. All right, so the examiner says, uh, let's talk about uh, social activities. Uh, what are common kinds of organizations that people participate in? And you notice there's a second question. Why are these kinds of clubs so popular? So again, it has to sound like a conversation. So here, your first answer may be uh, typical clubs that can be found in many countries and schools around the world include uh, sports clubs like uh, football and cricket, academic clubs uh, like music and geography clubs and social clubs. Uh, like the volunteer club I spoke about earlier. Okay. So use your knowledge from part two. And then when the examiner asks you the follow-up question, so they say, why are these kinds of clubs so popular? Then give a clear reason and use the question. So for instance, you can say, I believe that many people enjoy uh, participating. Now notice how I'm paraphrasing. I'm not saying popular, but many people enjoy participating. It means they're popular. So I believe that many people enjoy participating uh, in such 
clubs because humans are social by nature and they like to share their interests and hobbies with other like-minded uh, people. In my volunteer club, uh, there were uh, many members who really had a sense of fulfillment from helping those in need, uh, like uh, children uh, from impoverished families. Okay. So again, conversation style. Notice how I'm linking wherever I can. Okay. So that's the kind of language that you need to produce for those higher uh, band scores. Okay. This is what the question sheet for the examiner looks like. They have a question and then they have a follow-up question. Sometimes the follow-up question is really simple, like can you elaborate or can you give me an example? Sometimes it's a little bit more complicated, like why are these kinds of clubs so popular? But the idea here is that you're connecting ideas, you sound original and it comes across as a coherent conversation which of course makes sense because that type of communication demands higher level vocabulary fluency grammatical range and accuracy so that's what they're testing they're really trying to see you know are you a band seven are you a band eight or a nine candidate that is mostly decided in part three does everybody make sense no, sorry, <laughs> does that make sense to everybody? <laughs> Let me reiterate. Does that make sense to everybody, right? By the way, when you make mistakes in your speech, it's a good idea to correct. And you can use expressions like, uh, let me say that again. Or the one you might have just caught me using, uh, let me reiterate. Okay. And then correct yourself. All right, Mal says, yup. Gaming says, yup. Fuang says, yes, sir. Obsillinator says, absolutely. Okay, gaming says, game over. <laughs> Vanish says, thumbs up. Nice. Good to see all of you paying attention and responding. Okay, students. Uh, so again, like I keep telling everybody, um, please, 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 in your uh, premium version of your course, use that Black Friday discount, join the premium version, especially if you're in these live classes, and then in your My Student account, in your course, go through the sections, go through the uh, speaking section, and you're going to see a lot of these tips and strategies that I'm giving you uh, broken down into some very, very uh, clear uh, descriptions and uh, definitions with sample dialogues as well. Okay, so you're going to have lots of sample dialogues that explain how you need to give these answers, explanations, and examples for part three. So make sure to go through the course, especially for those of you who already have it. All right, everyone. Uh, like I said, usually on the website, we're using the live class and the student partner speaking. But for now, we are deferring to uh, Zoom, and I'm going to let everybody in right now um, and I will also put on my headset so we can practice these part three questions okay um, I'm just going to mute everybody for now <laughs> Um, and then I will ask to unmute as uh, you volunteer. So the way we're going to do the class now is uh, peer learning, whereby I will ask for volunteers to answer these questions. I will give you band score estimates, give you suggestions on what to do to improve, maybe some repetition. And of course, uh, when I'm speaking to one of your peers, uh, make sure to pay attention. A lot of the mistakes are very, very common uh, among candidates because, of course, as many of you know, most people who sit the IELTS exam have an intermediate level of English. So intermediate level students tend to share similar mistakes. So learn from each other's mistakes. Okay. 
All right, everybody. So I'm going to just bring Zoom over here to the other side of my screen. And then uh, we'll look for some volunteers. Okay. Um, SC, I see you changed your name. It's now Somi Parno. Somi Parno uh, had some mic issues. Somi Parno, you can unmute yourself and um, and then uh, we'll see if everything works okay. Somi Parno, are you there? Uh, good morning, Adrian. Uh, is my I hope my mic is fine now. It's working great. I hear you crystal clear now. Absolutely. All right. Good to know. Thank you. What did you do to fix it? I just changed my device. I had multiple devices on my computer, apparently. So I changed the device. Yeah, <laughs> I'm happy you found the solution. That's great. All right, and I'm glad to connect with you. Okay, uh, Somi Parno, um, where are you? What part of the world? I'm from Kolkata in India. From Kolkata, nice. And why are you taking the IELTS exam? I am actually planning to go for foreign studies, higher studies in Germany next year. So they require IELTS scores. Okay, yeah, it's the typical situation in the world these days. It makes sense. All right, and uh, just one more question. Um, what are you planning to study in your graduate school in Germany? I am planning to go for a major in computer science or in a related field. Okay. No wonder you were able to fix your microphone. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> you are capable when it comes to computers. Okay, um, all right. So I will ask you some part three questions and then um, I'll give you some feedback. Um, as we get into these part three questions, what did you plan to answer for part two? So part two was a club that you had been a member of and um, what were you thinking? What, what was the club? Uh, I was actually thinking of talking about a gaming club uh, that I joined in January and uh, left. Uh, I was there for six months. Okay, great. Like uh, computer gaming? Computer gaming, yes. Video mm -hmm. games. Okay, yeah. That's what I thought. But uh, you want to definitely be specific because there are other types of gaming clubs like for board games, for example. So, um, okay. Awesome. Uh, keep that in mind as I ask you these questions, okay? Got it. Ready? Let's talk about social activities. What are common kinds of organizations that people participate in? Uh, around the world, people mostly participate in uh, organizations like sports clubs, like in football or cricket clubs, and also academic clubs like bo reading books or book clubs or uh, let, let me uh, reiterate that. Uh, like they join academic clubs like book clubs and uh, cooking clubs and uh, most of the reasons that uh, lie with the uh, life for join, joining clubs is because most of these uh, activities are uh, aligned to most people's interests so uh, like in cricket clubs uh, in india there is a uh, a lot of people are very big fans of cricket so they like joining cricket clubs and typically cricket clubs are very in demand and also these uh, gifts are respite uh, from the hectic work uh, work schedules from in their lives like in my which gaming club of, i only uh, which kinds of skills can be gained from being a member of a club i believe the most important skill that you can gain from joining a club is uh, net, the networking skill because you will meet a lot of people from different walks of life and uh, and this skill is very uh, useful uh, in both personal and professional life. Are these skills useful in other aspects of life? As I mentioned earlier, uh, these skills are very definitely useful in uh, personal and professional life. Like if you are, uh, these skills definitely improve your communication skills and uh, these help you uh, when you are interviewing for jobs and you are meeting new people in new countries, you will feel more comfortable because you have met a lot of similar minded people. Okay. Let me just stop there and give you some feedback. 
All right. Um, is it okay if I call you SC? I just have trouble remembering sure. your, your sure, name. Sure. It's a little bit challenging for me. So, all right, SC. Um, so that was quite good. Okay. Uh, and uh, I would say that you would probably get a band um, 775 for that. Uh, had you not gotten stuck uh, in your first answer a couple of times and that led to some awkward language, you would probably get like a 7.5, maybe even an 8. You are very fluent. You do have very good vocabulary. I can tell that um, uh, you're quite comfortable with English. Um, one of your expressions that shows me this is when uh, you said that um, in these clubs, uh, people can uh, meet others from many different walks of life. And that's a fairly advanced um, expression for sure. Uh, so let me see where you said that. Um, uh, t -t 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 yeah. Um, uh, where did you say that? You s anyway, you said it. I wrote it down <laughs> somewhere here. Uh, let me just check for it. Walks. Yeah, there it is. Okay, um, so you said, um, I believe the most important skill that you can gain is the networking skill because you meet a lot of people from different walks of life. Right. Okay, um, yeah, so that was a really nice expression. Okay, so there were definitely some very strong elements to your speaking. However, there was um, certain places where your grammar and your word use were off and they were a little bit uh, unnatural or awkward you definitely want to pay attention to that and uh, you don't want to get stuck right SC so when you get stuck it's really it makes the rest of your speaking a lot more difficult right because you get frustrated that you're stuck right. yeah so not getting stuck is important and um, there is a way and it's what I mentioned to you. So I asked you what are uh, common kinds of organizations that par people participate in and you said around the world uh, people mostly participate in organizations like sports clubs, academic clubs and then you said oh let me redirect that. It's not redirect in that this case it's what I said it's reiterate or let me re I actually say reiterate. Um, oh re uh, did you say reiterate? Yes. Okay <laughs> just pronounce it after me. Re Reiterate. Reiterate. Okay. Reiterate. Like rate someone. Reiterate. Reiterate. Okay, much better. Um, now, if you're having trouble with a certain word, you can always choose another one. Restate is a simpler way to say it. Let me restate that. Can Let me restate that. Exactly. Yes. And that's very clear, your pronunciation on that one. Okay. Sometimes you have to, you know, it's, and I've never really said this tip before. There are so many tips and strategies and I've never really said this one SC, but um, one smart strategy for everybody, be familiar with the words that are tricky for you to pronounce. Okay. So oftentimes when we learn another language, I've learned uh, French and Japanese in the past. And I know that some words I pronounce very clearly. Some words, every time I use them, people kind of look at me like, what did you just say? <laughs> right. So it's good to be familiar with words that we don't pronounce very clearly and try to avoid them if possible. You know what I'm saying, SC? So try to use a different word instead of that word. So until you get the, the, clear pronunciation. Now, uh, more importantly, as see, you said uh, they join academic clubs and then you got stuck again. <laughs> You're like, oh no, I'm stuck. Right. I'm stuck again. Um, and then you went cooking clubs. Um, you just uh, anything at that point, right? Cooking clubs. Okay. There was a way I think you could have uh, got yourself unstuck and it could have been easier. What do you think? What should you have used in this kind of, after you said academic clubs, in this situation here, what should you have been thinking in your head to use to get yourself more fluent and unstuck? What do you think? I guess I should have asked for a little bit of time to think about what I'm going to say. That's not bad. Yeah, definitely. So um, you could have, um, you could have said, okay, I'm rushing. Just give me a moment. Let me collect my thoughts. Okay. Can you repeat right. that? Uh, just give me a moment. I'm rushing. Let me collect my thoughts. Uh, just give me a moment. I'm rushing. Let me uh, recollect my thoughts. Not recollect, just collect. Let me collect my thoughts. Okay. Uh, 
just give me a moment i'm rushing let me collect my thoughts okay yeah and then you collect your thoughts now while you're collecting your thoughts because you kind of tried to do that when you said let me restate that right but you still had trouble so when you're doing that when you're collecting your thoughts what should you be thinking the immediate point which i'm which i'm trying to uh talk about no <laughs> good try though <laughs> um no yeah. and i love how you answered uh, but no it's fine um the your part two right so i was kind of thinking to myself i'm like why not just um say game clubs or clubs that are for fun right so you said around the world people mostly participate in organizations like sports club academic clubs um just give me a moment oh yeah and of course uh clubs for entertainment or for having fun like the um the computer game or gaming club I spoke about uh, in part two. And now you have really nice natural English, right? So mm -hmm. try it. What are common kinds of organizations that people participate in? Uh, the most common kinds of organizations that people participate in are uh, sports clubs and uh, also uh, clubs for entertainment like gaming clubs, which I uh, mentioned earlier in my, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So that's it. I, you you kind of stopped because you saw me nodding. But yeah, that's it. Okay. And it's okay if you missed academic clubs as long as you finish with that connection, that uh, visualization. Now, the other aspect too, of course, right, is quick logic. So why do people join sports clubs? Think simple. Because it's mostly aligned to their interests and uh, people like... Uh, sure. Now, uh, just a sec. I'm going to stop you there, I see. Yeah. So, interest interest works for all of them, right? So, sports clubs, right. interest. Uh, gaming club, interest. Um, academic club, interest. However, sports clubs have one key point that's unique, that's very obvious. Why does somebody join a running club or a football club or a exercise club, yoga club? Because Why? they're conscious about health. Exactly. Yes, they're health conscious. And look at that beautiful vocabulary right away. You said they're conscious about health. That's band nine level vocabulary use, right? So I want to hear that. Why do people join academic clubs? What's unique? Because they like studying. And they want to be? They want to be uh, best in their whatever field they're pursuing. Yeah. And want to be as educated as possible. Yeah, they want to be smart, clever, intelligent, right? In that field, right. absolutely, right? So we join an academic club. Um, why do we join a gaming club? To bond with people over gaming and uh, and also to get some respite from their hectic uh, work life, work schedules. Yeah, to, to put it simply, to disconnect and have some fun, right? So um, oftentimes with reasons, um, there are some very logical answers that are right in front of us. And, you know, as the saying goes, we often don't see what's right in front of our eyes. Um, so in the aisle, it's a very important trick or strategy is pay attention to the obvious logic that is in front of you but it's just easy to miss sometimes. Does that make sense, SC? Absolutely, okay. yes. Because content can really help to boost your score with fluency, accuracy, language. As you just said, people join academic clubs because they're uh, conscious about their health. And that, I, again, that shows me that you're very familiar with English when you use that language. Okay, SC? All right. So focus on that content, and I think you'll yeah. be great, okay? Thank you so much then, for volunteering. Yes. I'd also like to add that, uh, like, I speak English uh, quite uh, okay, but uh, sometimes uh, when I was looking at the questions uh, in the description of this video, I I was thinking through a lot of answers, like a lot of things and a lot of vocabulary was coming to my mind. But when I talked with you, it kind I kind of spaced out there. Yeah. So to keep yourself um, framed to have parameters in your uh, thinking, you have to kind of go one, two, three, and then logic one, two, three. So people join sports clubs, academic clubs, and clubs for fun. Like, 
cricket like a reading club like a gaming club uh, the first one for health mostly the second one because they want to be smart make lots of money and the third uh, just to relax and enjoy their hobbies right so you, you you really kind of frame the information in your head does that make sense what I'm saying Yes, absolutely. Right? Um, one other way, and again, you know, I'm spending a lot of time with AC here because these are very important points and they're very common mistakes um, in not just English but in thinking when people are being interviewed on uh, kind of surprise topics like this. It's easy to go off topic. It's easy to lose your ideas. Um, and there are definitely a lot of ways to learn to control that through visualization, through using critical thinking and logic. And you definitely, definitely want to practice that um, before your IELTS exam so you become proficient at it. Um, when you find yourself or anybody, uh, SC, uh, thinking like and so on or etc that's when you know that you're not controlling your thoughts to control your thoughts you should be thinking one two three that's it okay or one two that's it you shouldn't be thinking one two three and 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 okay because then your brain is kind of going all over the place so control that both in your speaking and your writing okay right all right thank you SC have a lovely rest of your day in India same to you and uh, my exam is on uh, 12th december so wish me luck well good luck for the exam and i'll definitely be hosting several more classes until then so keep coming back okay sure absolutely it was a pleasure talking to you to you as well bye sc bye bye all right that was sc let's give sc a thumbs up that was really good Okay, um, let's, uh, I see some other hands up. So if you'd like to volunteer uh, for speaking, definitely just put up your hand, okay? Uh, we'll move through some of these questions uh, now that you're uh, getting some clear ideas on how to approach these questions, right? So have a limit to your ideas. Try to choose those top level answers with clear explanations. All right, um, let's give uh, Divya a chance. I don't think we've heard from Divya in a while. Let's check in, see how Divya is doing. Hi, Adrian. Hi, Divya. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am also doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. How are your studies going, Divya? Oh, they're going well. I'm a bit nervous right now. Yeah, don't worry about it. Um, what's your study schedule like? So when you're studying speaking, for example, what do you do to practice your speaking for IELTS? I usually practice with my friends uh, and I also use your portal for AEHelp to, to speak with other uh, test takers. Great, great. Um, that system we're upgrading right now. It'll take a few days for us to upgrade that system. So definitely check back. But it's great that you're using uh, that system. Um, and do you have a regular schedule? So do you have like a schedule like, OK, every Monday to Thursday from five till six in the evening, I'm using English only and that's it. Or do you just kind of do it randomly? Not really. It's, it's just random. <laughs> OK regular scheduled speaking practice highly recommend it not a lot of people do it but it's a really good idea okay Divya yes yeah <laughs> right. oh there you are Divya sorry I was looking at my other screen but I can see you now I'm, I'm kind of moving around here let me I'm glad you put your turns your exam is in three days and so I just wanted to do a face on face and I've been really I've been following you since two years now on and off but uh, never had the courage to actually speak okay or one, so. well well i can see you now and uh, so can your peers which is fantastic um and it's a great way to build confidence uh divya so that's great okay uh, whenever you have the chance students do practice with a uh, video so showing your face and um, that will help you to just feel a lot more like the real exam and a lot more confident okay Tibia so I definitely recommend video whenever possible okay cool well uh, first of all good luck on your exam when it's coming up <laughs> okay <laughs> all right I'll ask you some questions are you ready yeah. okay um, Let's do this. I have you on my other screen now. So here we go. Uh, let's talk about social activities. 
Are there any negative consequences to uh, joining a club? Personally, I feel that uh, there would be a negative consequence of uh, joining a joining a club, let's say a sports club or an academic club or uh, or a cooking club, maybe. Um, I personally feel that, uh, let's say, a person is playing a lot of sports and uh, there are chances that one might get injured if not played well. And that could cause for a lifetime of being bedridden or being unable to play a sport in the future. And academically, uh, I personally feel that um, if somebody is regularly being uh, in the club, uh, they might uh, lose a sense of uh, belongingness with other people outside their comfort zone and they might just want to be how attached. Can, how can these be avoided? Uh, these could be avoided by setting uh, goals. Uh, you go to a club, let's say just once a week and uh, meet your uh, uh, near and dear ones and uh, practice with them, study with them, share your ideas and opinions with each other. But after that, you're back to your normal, regular life, which helps in not being getting lost in, in that world. Where can people find out about clubs in their community? Uh, usually these days, you can easily find them online. You could uh, just search for uh, the nearest, maybe a gaming club or a book club or a sports club, and you just have it there. And you directly go in to join in over there. Are there any other ways? Uh, th there could be one uh, person to person, uh, wherein you are personally asking a friend or a colleague or anyone near or around, and uh, you could physically go there and uh, find about it. When is a good time to become a member of an organization? believe there's no time limit you can join any group anytime you want uh, it's never too late to start anything and uh, so when you're motivated enough to join a book club or an academic club or any club whatsoever you can go ahead with it okay that is the end of part three okay that was good all right let me give you some feedback so definitely um a 7.5 at least for sure okay i would score you around that um somewhere between the good and the very good range uh, you're fluent uh, i understand mostly what you're saying you do have some awkward language and um, some word choice that can be better uh, to make your speech uh, stronger, more natural. I'll give you um, some examples of that, okay? And again, it's just, it's what we practice, right? That quick thinking that I was talking to SC about, like what are the negatives? And I think in some ways you did a good job. So you realize that yes, of course a person could suffer injury or other types of negative consequences from uh, joining a club. And did you visualize that? So like, did you did you see like a sports player getting injured on the field? Yeah, I did that. That's when I could answer that question. Correctly. Yeah, that's what I thought. So it's kind of like when, when you suddenly see that football player falling, breaking their leg, that's when you realize, oh yes, <laughs> you could definitely have a negative experience. I know I have a friend who injured their knee quite badly uh, playing football and another one who injured their shoulder quite badly playing uh, basketball. So as soon as I can see that, I can give that detail. Um, and um, and those can be negatives for sure. Uh, let me give you some uh, feedback on your word choice, okay? So you said, you said, like, let's say a sports club, a person might get injured. You can say the detail that you see. So you can say, like, um, a cricketer uh, breaking their arm or their leg um, when uh, they are running. And then you said that might lead to a lifetime of being bedridden. 
Um, I think what you meant to say by that is a person could suffer a serious injury where they could be a paraplegic or a quadriplegic. Do you know those words? Paraplegic, quadriplegic? Okay, paraplegic is when we can no longer use our legs. Quadriplegic is when we can no longer use our entire body except our head. Quadra, meaning all four, arms and legs, quad, four. Um, and uh, para meaning two, so we can't use our legs, okay? So I think that's what you were trying to say. Like in worst case situations, people could be paralyzed, okay? Can you repeat that after me? So in the worst case situations, people could even be paralyzed. I've heard of athletes not being able to walk after a serious injury. Um, in worst case scenarios, people could be paralyzed. I've seen athletes uh, being paralyzed for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. And it's a tricky question, right? Because joining clubs usually is a positive. So most of us don't experience negatives, mostly positives. But I'm very happy that you realize that, um, yes, of course, negatives always exist. Um, we just have to think about how and uh, what, right? Um, you can also think that some clubs have bad agendas, right? So there are definitely clubs out there that don't have moral or ethical values. So the club's goal is to control people or uh, to spread prejudice in the world, labeling people, right? So certain types of clubs don't have a positive agenda. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. So if you're thinking of all the clubs out there, yeah, we usually think, OK, most clubs are positive. But then if you watch the news and you see some organizations, definitely some pop to mind that are like, oh, yeah, no, that's a bad club. Right. So let's not join that one. So uh, visualizing, again, is, is very powerful there. Um, when. I had it. Yep. Go ahead. Um, so when such question arises, wherein you're you're in contradiction with the thought, with the question. Um, do we need to go along with the question or can we contradict as well? So just asked for a negative opinion and I, I, I said that, yeah, there are negative consequences to it. Would it have been okay if I would have said that, no, there aren't, and but I see only positive aspects of it? Yes, you can. And you can still get a band nine. The only point to keep in mind it's a very good question and it's kind of like what Ivan I think was trying to explain there at one point too is like well I'm giving my honest belief here right uh, and that's fine or your immediate belief um, and that's fine however you have to be careful because if you give an answer that logically doesn't make much sense it becomes very difficult to explain and it could be very awkward both in language and in content right so if you're saying there's never a negative to joining a club especially if the examiner in their head has some very good examples of negative mm -hmm. situations then it's going to be a little bit difficult to explain that so you do have to be careful of the content and make sure that it's realistic in some sense okay all right but there's no rule so to clearly answer your question there's no rule that you have to agree or disagree it's up to you okay all right are you still there yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Um, and you can, uh, so to even add to that, to boost your language, um, you can even start by saying, like, while I believe joining clubs is mostly a positive, in some unique cases, there can be negatives like injury, social isolation, or ridicule. Okay, can you try that sentence? Um while I believe that there are positive aspects to joining a club, in certain scenarios, there could be a situation wherein a negative experience might arise. Okay. Do you know the word ridicule? Ridicule, yeah. What does it mean? Uh, I cannot really explain, but I, I know the meaning of it. Uh, ridicule is the technical way of saying bullying. Bullying. Okay. So when other members of the club or some uh, aspect of the club is um, uh, hurting the person's um, 
perception of self or who they are or you know somebody calling them fat or ugly or something like that right so that would be ridicule or bullying so it's a negative criticism aimed to emotionally hurt or injure another okay so ridicule means to verbally attack and emotionally injure another person Okay, so let's try it one more time. And when I'm doing this, everybody, I hope that all of you who are muted right now are also repeating these sentences. So one more time, while I believe that in most cases, joining a club is positive, there can be negatives like injury or ridicule in sports clubs or academic clubs. One of my friends was depressed after being bullied in a reading club. Try that. Um, while I believe that there are many positives to joining um, a club, I believe in certain scenarios there are tendencies wherein uh, it could lead to a neg negative impact, um, such as uh, getting an injury or uh, or being ridiculed uh, in the sports club. Uh, I knew a friend of mine who was bullied by his um, playmates and uh, went uh, through, went under a depression. Went into depression. Okay. However, that response was Divya band 8.5 to 9. Okay. So that's your very good to expert level response. Does that make sense? Yeah. See, so you have it. You have the language. It's just a matter of practice, right? And being able to do it spontaneously when you don't have a chance to prepare, right? But you have lovely, lovely pronunciation and you definitely have a lot of vocabulary. So just keep practicing, okay? All right. Thank you so much, Divya. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. You too. Bye for now. Okay, everybody, that was Divya. Give Divya a, a thumbs up um, so that, um, uh, let me just see here. Uh, I think some people are trying to join, so let me try to give them uh, permission. Um, and then we'll continue. I see that I have some more uh, volunteers here as well okay uh, zoom is just a little bit tricky to figure out all the settings so I'm trying to allow everybody to join in maybe for future classes I'll try to get somebody to be a host um, or to assist me in the hosting here so that uh, uh, I can let people in okay just give me one second bear with me everyone there we go okay now I open that up. Okay. Um, and Mariam's trying to get in. Okay, Mariam, there you go. All right, let's take another volunteer. Um, so, uh, Shaha, uh, can you unmute yourself if you're still there? Hello, good evening. Hi, Shaha, good uh, evening to you. It's morning to me but i'm guessing evening so you're on the other side of the world yeah i guess we have like 12 hours of differences what time is it for you uh it's half past 9 p.m yeah so almost exactly yeah it's 8 18 a.m <laughs> in my time whereabouts are <laughs> yeah. you where are you so you're on the other side of the world where are you uh i'm from uzbekistan mainly from tashkent mm-hmm Uzbekistan, Tashkent. All right. And uh, why are you doing the IELTS? Um, well, I'm taking my master's degree this year. So um, I need IELTS for the entrance exam. And also, um, I'm really interested in the score that I might get. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's almost like you can't avoid IELTS eventually. <laughs> it's like everybody has to do it, especially if you're doing university. Uh, master's, uh, PhD degrees, they require them because research is often done in English and presented in English, right? So graduate schools are like, okay, you have to speak English because that's the way we present knowledge globally, right? So it makes sense. Um, all right, uh, well, let me ask you some questions. Are you ready? Yes, I am. All right. Let's talk about social activities. What are common kinds of organizations that people participate in? 
Uh, so in my country, the most popular ones are uh, language classes, like language clubs, since English is considered to be an international language. Um, all uh, parents, they um, uh, want their children to talk in that language. That's why there are so many language clubs, such as English clubs, uh, German classes, and also Russian ones. And um, these ones are really uh, interesting since people um, who are teacher, like teachers, they are they can be um, from other countries. So it's really beneficial. Um, Which to kinds be in of classes. skills can be gained from being a member of a club? Uh, so mainly it's speaking skills uh, as well as reading, writing. So academically, um, you can um, take all these uh, skills in one, like in one class. Are these skills useful in other aspects of life? Uh, definitely, since um, everyone is socializing in this world. So uh, everyone uh, needs to... Um, should be able to communicate in this language. And they use, uh, they communicate through uh, online apps like Telegrams or WhatsApp, as well as calling, like through the calls. So I, I think that they are beneficial. Are there any negative consequences to joining a club? Uh, well, um, there could be some uh, disadvantages in uh, taking part in these classes, such as uh, being bullied by other people while uh, you cannot uh, be able to express your feelings or your thoughts and uh, you might be shy after if someone said that you have pronounced the word incorrectly uh, it can uh, hurt the person because uh, they are already doing their best but at the same time uh, everyone is like looking at them when they are uh, they want to ask questions, like um, they don't give a chance to uh, communicate or socialize. Okay. All right. I'll stop there and give you some feedback. So um, you have good English for sure. I think your score for these answers would be about a band 7 to 7.5, somewhere in that range. So the good to a little bit better than good. The Now keep in mind everybody that part three is the most challenging part of the speaking test and the better that you're performing, the more difficult the questions. Okay, so the mm -hmm. examiner, the instructions for the examiner in their training is that when you hear the candidate speaking good English, ask them a difficult question. When you hear them speaking very good English, ask them a very surprising and challenging question to see if they can use expert English quickly to respond accurately to unexpected situations as well. They're not just testing your English, they're testing your ability to think quickly using the language. Does that make sense? Yes, okay. I, I got you. All right. So if you're getting some challenging questions in part three, that's usually a good sign. That means that you're doing quite well and the examiner is testing to see if you can do even better. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, uh, when you're practicing in classes, like in this setting here, always try to... Um, add new content, paraphrase, add different ways, especially when you have good English. So you've heard people talking about popular clubs like sports clubs and uh, uh, academic clubs. So you want to try to paraphrase that. What's another way to say a sports club? We haven't really used this today yet. Um, it starts with an A. Physical classes? I don't know. Sports club. Uh, it's actually commonly said this way professionally, like when you look it up online. It starts with an A. Athletic clubs. Uh, uh -huh. Okay. So sports clubs are often referred to as athletic clubs. Okay. Or even shortened to athletics. Just that. Okay. So athletic clubs, uh, for sure. Um, okay. And um, when you have a plural in the question, so it's organization Z, then definitely try to give at least two. So you got stuck kind of on language classes like German, Russian, um, English. In this case, when you hear the S, try to give at least one more. So language classes as well as athletic clubs. Um, 
when people want to do good in the world, so I'm also pushing uh, your grammar here, um, Shaha, okay. Um, when people want to do good in the world, so building wells in Africa, like Mr. Beast's uh, I just built 100 wells in Africa video, or um, they want to um, work at a soup kitchen to feed the people who are hungry. When you take your money and your time and your energy to help others, what is that called? What type of work are you doing? It starts with a P H, but it's pronounced an F. Phil. Do you know the word, Sha? Phil. Yeah, I thought it's just volunteering. Um, it's a type of volunteering when you're helping the world. Um, Anahita and a couple of your classmates, if you take a quick peek at the YouTube chat, they're giving you the word. You see Future it? assistant. No. Oh, sorry. Nope, nope, nope. It's philanthropy. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you heard this word before? No, I haven't. Sorry. Okay. So philanthropy is basically when you have goodwill and you take activities or do activities that spread goodwill and help around the world. So the volunteering uh, to help people or the world be a better place. Actually, you're doing the same because I'm really grateful for you to organize such kind of events where we can an anticipate and um, get our feedback. So I'm really grateful for you. Thank you very much. I appreciate your comment and your flattery. And I would love to say that I'm purely doing philanthropy and it's 100% altruistic. But at the same time, you know, we are selling our courses and there's a win win situation for everybody. So it's not purely altruistic. Do you know this word, altruistic? Uh, altruistic. No, I don't know. Uh, altruistic is when you uh, take positive action for nothing in return. So you give someone a hundred dollars and you don't expect any favor in return. So that's called altruism. It's very rare. Some people say it doesn't even exist. Um, but uh, that's why I said I'd love to say we are altruistic, but it's not completely true. <laughs> so uh, nevertheless, though, I do. Yeah, it's, it's, it is our goal and it's our motto. We say your success is our success. So we do try to help as many people as we can in the world with our products and these classes for sure. So I appreciate you for saying that. Uh, and I'm also teaching some vocabulary. Uh, can you repeat after me? please philanthropy a uh, philanthropy altruistic altruistic altruism 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 means to do good without any expectation uh, altruism means to do good without any expectation uh, any expectations Common organizations include athletic clubs and clubs that focus on philanthropy, which are altruistic. Uh, our clubs um, focus on philanthropy and altruistic. Okay, that was a tricky one, right? I'm really pushing. Some people are like, oh, he's pushing for that. Yeah. Ban 10, ban 10. <laughs> right? Now, yeah. I, I'm... I'm I'm taking advantage of Shaha's good pronunciation and fluency to get everybody to repeat here. So Shaha, it's not a problem. I'm going to say it one more time, okay? Common types of organizations include athletic clubs and clubs that focus on philanthropy. They take altruistic actions to help people around the world through volunteering like cleaning the oceans and teaching children to read. Doesn't have to be the same, Shaha, just the same concepts and vocabulary. Okay, so um, our common clubs are typically include um, athletic uh, athletic clubs as well as um, focusing on uh, altruistic um, behaviors through philanthropy. Behaviors through, through philanthropy, like feeding hungry people, like feeding hungry people as well or, as um, cleaning up pollution. Sorry? As well as cleaning up pollution. As well as cleaning up some pollution. Okay, good. So I'm always pushing, right? My goal here is always to encourage everybody uh, to 
use better, more advanced English, and uh, you're doing great. So, you know, just keep going forward, keep practicing. I think you have lovely English. Definitely incorporate advanced vocabulary and make sure to um, answer questions uh, in detail, dynamically, okay? Yeah, thank you very much. You're super, super welcome. And you said you have an IELTS exam coming up. Do I, did I remember that correctly? Uh, yeah, yeah, soon, like after 10 days. Okay, well, good luck on that exam. I think you'll do great. By the way, uh, come back and let us know how you did. So my guess is you'll get probably a 7.5 in your speaking, maybe better. And I would love to know how, how you did. So once you have your score, come back and just let us know. I would say, hey, Adrian was completely wrong. I got an 8.5. Okay, so <laughs> let us know. Okay. Absolutely. I will, right. I will inform you. Okay. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you for volunteering. Bye, Shaha. Okay, that was Thank Shaha. You. Give Shaha a thumbs up. You're welcome, Shaha. Give give Shaha a thumbs up. That was great. Um, and uh, I could tell that she was just into being challenged uh, to some advanced English there. So I thought I'd teach you some of these uh, words. Okay, uh, let's take somebody else. Um, Anahita, do you want to unmute yourself, please? Hello, sir. How are you, Anahita? I'm good. How about you? I am great. I saw that you knew the word philanthropy. Where did you learn that word? Uh, my father is in Pakistan. So one day he asked, uh, asked me to uh, translate something. And then I translated. While translating that, I learned this word. It's a good word to know. Yeah, it's often used with uh, people who are really rich and successful in life and they have achieved all their uh, work goals and then they engage in philanthropy uh, on YouTube. A uh, person who combines philanthropy with their work often these days is Mr. Beast. Are you familiar with this YouTube character, Mr. Beast? No, sir. Oh, really? He's like number two or number three or number one for the most subscribers. I think he's got like 150 million subscribers or something like that. But anyway, <laughs> he's he does a lot of philanthropy. Okay, Anahita, are you ready for a few questions? Yes, I am. All right, then let's talk about uh, social activities. Which kinds of skills can be gained from being a member of a club? Uh, social skills such as social interaction and uh, one minute can I repeat sure some skills such as communication skills as well as uh, uh, as well as uh, some other skills like uh, um, enhancing one's uh, cap capability to uh, shoot the basket for example can be learned through uh, various skills, especially uh, physical fitness clubs and... Um, uh, Are these skills useful club. in other aspects of life? Yes, these uh, skills are very advantageous in other aspects of life because uh, these uh, are correlated with each other. Moreover, uh, one can learn when one can learn one thing, one aspect of something. They indeed learn uh, another aspect as well. Can you give me an example? Yes, for example, when I was uh, in a basketball team, I learned how to shoot the basket, and I learned to uh, and I learned to how to communicate with my friends. Uh, so I. Uh, later on, I learned how to I learned how to uh, talk with my friends uh, uh, in a better way. Okay, uh, let me give you some feedback and some correction. All right, so your band score there, Anahita, would be about a six, six point six not closer to the six than a 6.5 I think so fluent but not quite to the good yet just because there were some awkward pauses um, there were some repetitive words repetitive ideas 
um, and some unnatural language. I'll, I'll highlight some of these. So the word that, of course, came up with these questions often is the word skills. And you kind of stuck to that word, skills. Um, what are some other ways to say skills or skill? Um, skills, capabilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's actually a very nice one. Capabilities. Yeah, absolutely. What else? I think you might... Um, oh, Able, here, my camera, I think, fell asleep. But thank you, Nizomi Joan, for letting me know. Um, so uh, capabilities, sure. Um, abilities, yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, what else? There's some simple ones. Sometimes, um, like, remember what I said to SC? Sometimes the simple ideas are the simple... Uh, answers in front of us, but we just don't see it. So skill, capabilities, abilities, proficiency. proficiency. That's a tricky one, but yes, that works as well. What else? Uh, attitude? No. Attitude, yeah. Attitude could be, yeah, you can learn an attitude in a club and an attitude is a type of skill. Absolutely. Now you're thinking outside the box. Good. Um, Anahita, to give you an idea, there's about six, seven words. And again, everybody, I'm not just talking to Anahita here. I'm talking to everyone. So there's about six or seven simple words that most of you will know for sure that could be used to replace skills in the answer. And you should use them just have to think about them and you know them and you use these all the time so other ways yeah Alexander says how about just simply knowledge right that's a simple one the knowledge that we gain from clubs okay information the that's, information is a type of skill. Not a skill knowledge is a skill in a sense so um, the no the knowledge I gained uh, through participating in uh, a sports club I use in other aspects of life, like my knowledge of how to communicate. So there is an overlap between skill. And you're right, um, Anahita, I'm glad that you said that. I'm glad you said that knowledge is not a skill. Your paraphrase doesn't have to be one for one. It doesn't have to be a perfect synonym. This is why the human brain is a lot more amazing than um, simple software that's giving you just synonyms or an AI because you can interpret the language in various ways more dynamically. And that's what you want to do in the IELTS to give better answers. Does that make sense, Anahita? Yes, sir. Right? So if you're telling me the knowledge I gain from being a part of the chess club has really helped me to think critically in my business, I know that you're talking about the skill that you gained in the chess club. Does that make sense? Or even if you use the, the word information or attitude, in a sense, attitude is not skill either, but you used it because you realized that that could replace the concept of skill in some aspect, right? Does it make sense, Anahita? Yes. Okay, let me ask you yes, the sir. question again and try to use these words in a more dynamic answer. Which kinds of skills can be gained from being a member of a club? Many proficiencies can be gained from uh, engaging in these associations, such as social interaction and uh, social interaction and communication skills keep going the knowledge i Indeed, gained I, the knowledge i gained from the chess club allowed me to think critically and uh, then when i uh, uh, solved the mathematic questions i easily solved them in my master's studies in my master's studies always give context right but much better, much more dynamic use of vocabulary. It's going to be a much higher score for an answer that's using that kind of vocabulary than if you're saying some skills such as social interaction, can I repeat some skills such as communication skills as well as some other skills like enhancing. You notice how I'm just skill, 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 and it starts to become redundant. When you have that redundancy, Anahita, it will drop your score. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Right? So think dynamically, think outside the box. And, you know, this is often where sometimes students will, um, uh, I, I don't want to use the word excuse, but they kind of use the excuse of like, I don't have the vocabulary. And I always kind of look and say, mm, I'm not sure that's true. I know you know the word attitude, knowledge, information. You just have to think differently about the question. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. I have taught the, the 
paraphrases should be totally the same therefore no I... no 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 no. and i'm happy you bring that up. a lot of people do it doesn't need to be the same it just has to be coherent coherence doesn't mean one for one synonym okay okay all right it's a very good point because a lot of people do have that concept in mind but it's not accurate okay Okay, sir. All right. Thank you, Anahita, for highlighting that really important aspect of the response. It's a very important piece to keep in mind. So I appreciate you for highlighting that. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Bye, Thank Anahita. You. Bye, sir. You're super welcome. Bye, Anahita. Okay, everybody, give Anahita a thumbs up um, because she certainly is working super hard and she always brings great value to the table. Um, for everybody uh, to learn so big thumbs up on Ahita um, and again here an important point is avoid redundancy okay all right let's look for another uh, volunteer um, I see a lot of hands up which is lovely to see it means you're many of you are very confident and I think that's great if you want to speak all you have to do is use the emoji in the zoom to put up your hand okay you can probably see that in zoom when you uh, have it open you'll see lots of people's hands are up and uh, they're wanting to uh, interact uh, Azim let's check in are you there Azim hello Mr. Adrian hi Azim good to see you How I see you? you I am good I see your face too which is fantastic it's a still shot but it's Azim there's Azim everybody <laughs> handsome looking man all thank right, you, Azim. Thank you. <laughs> Good. I'm happy you're here with me. Um, Azim, um, did you watch the part two uh, lesson? Yes, yes, I did. Okay. And what part, uh, sorry, what club uh, did you want to uh, I discuss? picked a summarizing club that I and my friend uh, uh, found in uh, college about four years ago. Summarizing club? Yeah. We note uh, in our classes uh, from... Uh, our teachers uh, uh, and share them with each, uh, each other. Interesting. I've actually heard about this uh, concept before and uh, it's it's great. So basically the goal of your club is to improve academic performance, right? Yes, but uh, in a day sometimes we had uh, five classes. We couldn't do it all by ourselves. So we uh, think it's uh, more efficient uh, each one take one class to note and at the weekend we share the notes yep just give me a second all right so I'm going to reiterate um, what you just said and then repeat after me uh, I wanted to speak about a summarizing club which my friend and I founded in university the goal of this club as the name implies the goal as uh, the it goal, implies the goal of this club as the name implies the goal of this club at uh, this implies one more time as it's, a, tr it's a tricky one but it's a nice yes. nice uh, <laughs> phrasing so the goal of this club as the name implies as the name implies the goal of this club as the name implies is to summarize content from university lectures to summarize content from the college university lectures or university uh, lectures in an efficient group system in efficient group system thereby improving understanding and academic performance thereby it's, <laughs> it's a long i know and it's a tough one right i'm pushing I, I for that i get the rest when i say the, the it is part. on the screen so if you, if you want to cheat a little bit okay. and read a little bit it is on the screen so thereby improving understanding and academic performance thereby improving understanding and academic performance all right advanced english takes a lot of effort yes. for anybody native speakers too i am right? terrible at imitating and uh, saying sentences it's just practice so the goal of this club as the name implies is to summarize content from university lectures in an efficient group system thereby improving understanding and academic performance that's much better that uh, <laughs> i i told <laughs> That's why I'm here, Azim. All right, go for it. Try it one more time. If you have to read a little bit, that's okay. 
no, uh, I want. Uh, do you want? Uh, I, okay, I can repeat it I one more it? time. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. I'll repeat. Yeah, no, 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 no. Let uh, I. I can't say it. The Go goal of it. this club, as the name implies, is to summarize content from university classes in a in a different group system, thereby improving understanding and uh, academic performances. Awesome, Azim. And somebody at your level, and a lot of IELTS candidates are at your level, where you know you have like that solid seven, right? So you 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 know you're more than fluent. You you were fluent years ago. So last year, the year yes. before, you were already fluent in English. Now you know that. No, now I'm starting to get good at English. Like I can talk to another Actually, person. Actually, right? Mr. Adrian, it's mm -hmm. less than a month that I started uh, to preparing myself for IELTS. I had learned English when I was young. I was a teenager, about seven years ago. But I stopped learning and studying until the last month. So you were probably already fluent somewhat when you were a teenager, right? Yes, yes. Because exactly. I learned it in my early age, I was fluent. But through the time, and uh, I didn't work uh, a lot, so I lost a lot of it. Yeah, it's the old saying, right? If you don't use yeah. it, you lose it. Right? Yeah, you probably true. heard that before. But you're back at it, and it's great. So now what you want to do is exactly this, where you're doing lots of repetition and you're challenging yourself. So not just repeating simple English, but repeating more complex English from pro professional settings. One great way to do this, Azim, is watch something like TED Talks um, on a topic that really interests you, that's in your major, in your field. And then pause video, repeat the speaker. Pause video, repeat the speaker. Of course, try to find good English. So, you know, there's so-so English on TED Talk sometimes too. But uh, when you find a, a, a good speaker, watch them, pause them, repeat them sentence by sentence and just really get a system going. Does that make sense? Yes, I agree. Okay. And the reason I'm telling you this because it sounds like your summarizing club was based on the same principle as just having an effective system, right? So, <laughs> yes. So I'm trying to <laughs> give you that yes. effective system, right? So it's an yes. effective system. Okay. Uh, answer a couple questions for me. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Let's do it. Um, are there any negative consequences to joining a club? Uh, yes, uh, there is, uh, I think, because we as a human can be affected by others' behavior. Sometimes unconsciously we imitate our circle of friends and get uh, attached to them. Uh, sometimes, uh, like before, when I was uh, in my uh, summarizing club, we had members that uh, didn't did uh, their part and uh, wanted to use not share notes. So. We speak with them to change their attitude and uh, don't let it become uh, common between our members. Okay. Um, very nice. Those are great answers. So like I say, you're definitely a solid band 775. Okay, clear answers, nice vocabulary, and you definitely want to push for that more advanced English that I was showing you earlier. Uh, careful with your irregular past verb. We spoke with them. We spoke with them. Okay. We spoke, not we spoke <clears throat> with them. We spoke with them. Okay? Yes, spoke with them. Yes, um, because we didn't want this negative attitude to rub off on others. Because we don't uh, want that uh, negative attitude to rub off with them. We didn't want this negative attitude to rub off on others. We didn't want this uh, negative attitude to rub off with them. On others others on others rub off. Yeah, it rubs on off on the other on person off. okay so okay. we didn't want this negative attitude to rub off on others uh, we didn't want this negative attitude to rub off on others awesome Azim that's it you know it's it's I know it's kind of sometimes frustrating mundane to say the same sentence like three four five six times but the idea or the the right strategy is to just repeat until you get it perfect, right? Repeat, uh, repeat, sorry, repeat. can I uh, repeat my answer again? I was a little bit nervous, so I couldn't uh, think very good. I couldn't think clearly. I uh, couldn't think clear clearly. Are there any negative consequences to joining a club? Uh, yes, there is. Because we as human can be affected by others' behavior, sometimes we unconsciously imitate our circle of friends and get attached to them. We should be careful. In our summarizing club, we had some basic rule 
that help us when a member didn't his part uh, we spoke with them to change their attitude to a better uh, volunteering altruistic philanthropic uh, behavior <laughs> okay. so we didn't want this negative attitude to rub off on others nice Azim. so that would be definitely more of a band eight to nine yes, i, I would, just want uh, these <laughs> new words in a one sentence <laughs> and you did a great job that's why you got me smiling and i appreciate that uh this is where I would say overkill. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's like Thank you're you. uh, trying to shoot a mosquito with a missile, um, but uh, but it's good for practice. Okay, on the IELTS, yeah. I would not suggest doing that where you're like way over the top. Um, but for practice, it is good because when we can do it in practice, then we can usually control it in our uh, official IELTS um, uh, speaking. So that would have been an overkill. Uh, like I said, it's trying to shoot a mosquito uh, with a missile. Okay, so um, on the IELTS, your goal is a band nine. You can't get above that, right? So you have to control it. But it was very nice. That was very well presented, Azim, and I appreciate you for that. So thank you. Thank you for these new words. I learned this today. You're very welcome. Azim, have a great rest of your day. Thanks for volunteering. Thank you. Uh, also, you have a good day, Mr. Adrian. Thank you. Bye, Azim. Bye. All right, that was Azim. Let's give Azim a thumbs up. I love Azim's attitude, by the way. Notice that when I was kind of about to end our interaction, he said, you know what? Give me another chance. I can do better. That confidence, that attitude, that's a winning attitude, everybody. So thumbs up for Azim. That's what you want to do. And uh, it was total overkill with the vocabulary and the explanation there. But you know what? It works. And uh, you definitely get me smiling as your examiner by uh, doing that. So uh, fantastic. <laughs> thumbs up for Azim. Uh, students, um, this live IELTS class session uh, was brought to you. Uh, by aehelp.com that is our website um, tomorrow we're going to do the second I said speaking tomorrow but I was wrong tomorrow we're actually going to have a listening class on YouTube it's going to be listening part three and four I forgot that earlier I mean yesterday I should say uh, we did listening part one and two from one of our listening exams so we're going to do a listening test tomorrow and I will give you strategies for that um, these materials those listening exams they're coming from our websites ahelp.com for academic IELTS and gltshelp.com for general IELTS now is the time to join the premium uh, package because it's our uh, Black Friday discount and as many of you know we always give kind of a 10% discount but right now for the next couple of days uh, we've got these 40% discounts and we've got the Black Friday BLKF day a 40 discount um, so you can use that on the websites uh, ahelp.com the home page will look like uh, this and you can click that big uh, red button there uh, to join the premium version lots of these tips and strategies that you hear me share are clearly uh, outlined in your courses okay general IELTS gltshelp.com green background same red button use the code uh, B L K F day 40 uh, the price is different in different countries in many countries it's cheaper than what you see here uh, depending on your local economy uh, Ugulhan, Fuang, Azim, Mariam, everybody who joined me in the Zoom session as well, you are all superstars and I am sincere when I say that. Um, I know that learning English is considered one of the most challenging languages in the world. Um, so uh, you're all very intelligent, brave individuals and I implore you to continue being the same. Much love to all of you wherever you're on the world today. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria here in Western Canada. Bye, everybody.